Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to understand iteration or looping statement. Guys, as the name suggests, looping means same thing is being executed in a loop again and again. In same ways, same set of code will be executing in looping statements again and again. So multiple number of times. Now looping statements are while loop, two while loop, four loop, for each loop. Let's see how it works one by one. So first we're going to get started with while loop. A while loop statement in Java programming language repeatedly executes a target statements as long as given condition is true. So in this, as I've told you, meaning of looping statement is that same block of statements will keep on executing again and again multiple number of times. In while loop, those block of statements will keep on executing till the time particular condition is true. So we will understand that in a better way when we will implement it practically. Let's just understand the syntax quickly. We write while, in while you give condition and after that you pass statements. So till the time the condition is true, these set of statements will keep on executing in a loop again and again till the time this condition is true. Let's see how we implement it practically. So let's switch to Eclipse IDE. Here you will be first initiating the variable. So we'll write int, let's say i is 1. So I'm declaring and assigning value to i. And here you can write while condition. So condition, let's say I want to check till the time i is less than equal to 5. So i less than equal to 5. And now my statements will start. So let's say statement is system dot out dot println, and I want to display i. So this is my while statement. So till the time this condition is true, it will execute this. But guys, if you see the present scenario, it will always true because i is less than or equal to five. So this condition will always true. That's why. In your looping statement, you always accompany increment statement too, so that the value of i increments and keeps on matching the condition. So here, I will write i++. plus plus. i++ plus plus means keep on incrementing the value of i with 1 with every execution. So first, i is starting with 1. It is satisfying the condition. So 1 is less than or equal to 5. This, these statements will execute. So I will be displayed and then I will be incremented. Again, the condition is checked. So now I is incremented. Value has been changed from 1 to 2. So original value of I was 1. So I wrote I++. plus plus. It become 2. So 2 is also satisfying the condition. This will execute. It will become 3. 3 is also matching the condition. 4 and last is 5. When it will become 5, 5 is matching this condition. It will display you this. Then it will become 6. So look at this. When 6 will come at the position of i, it is not matching the condition. So condition become false and these set of statements won't get executed. So this is what while loop is. So guys, in while loop, first the condition is checked and then statement is executed. So first you will check the condition and then statement will be executed. Let's see how it works. We will run it and look at this. We got 1 to 5. So it displayed till 5 when it becomes 6, condition become false and nothing is displayed. So these statements are not executed because condition turn out to be false. So guys, that's how while loop works. Next is do while loop. Let's understand it. So the Java do while loop is used to iterate a part of program several times. If the number of iterations is not fixed, you must have to execute the loop at least once. It is recommended to use do while loop. So guys, in this also, as the loop says, it will keep on repeating the set of statements again and again. But we use do while loop at the time when we are not sure about the number of execution. If number of iterations are not fixed, we must use do while loop. It is executed at least once because condition is checked after loop body. If you look at the syntax, first the statements are executed, first the code is executed, then condition is checked. So condition is checked at the end, 
first statement will be executed so statement will be executed at least once no matter condition is true or not as compared to while loop while loop have condition first and then statement is executed whereas here first statement is executed and then condition is checked so that's why statement will be executed no matter condition is true or not at least once so let's see how it works i have initiated i variable assign value as 1 now we will start with the do syntax so we'll write do and here you can write the syntax just system dot out dot println and here i will be writing i and as you know all the looping statements should have increment or decrement operator with it so i'll write i plus plus and here after this do loop you will write the while condition so while i is less than equal to let's say 5 so guys this is your do looping statement so do you write the statement and then you are checking the condition so this is same like while loop only difference is in while loop condition is checked first and then the statement is executed whereas in do while loop statement is executed first and then condition is being checked let's see how it works so we're going to execute it and look at this we got one to five so this is what do while loop is now let's move forward for another set of looping statement that is for loop so guys we use for loop when we are sure about the number of iterations so when you know exactly how many times you want to loop through a block of code use the for loop instead of while loops so in while loops you are not sure about how many times you want to iterate the block whereas in for loop you're sure about the number of iterations so syntax of for loop is first you initialize then we give condition increment decrement and then we provide the statements let's understand this with the implementation so we'll write for and in brackets first thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize our variable so here you will write int i and the initial value from where you want to start your loop so i want to display 1 to 10 and i want to start my loop from 1 so initial value is 1 and then the second thing is you will be providing condition so condition is i should be less than equal to 10 that means this loop should keep on continuing till the time this condition is true and last is whether you want to increment or decrement this loop so i want to increment it because i want to increase this number from 1 2 3 4 so numbers are increasing in the series that's why we will write i plus plus and start curly braces guys whenever you want to write any code so it should always enclose within the curly braces so here we will write the statements now system dot out dot print ln and here i will be passing i semicolon that's it so let's understand this and then we will work on the execution part here i'm initializing the variable unlike a do while or while loop we were initializing the variable outside the loop here in for loop you are initializing it within the for loop then you are giving the condition and then you are telling whether you want to increment or decrement it and in curly braces you are passing the statement let's see how it works we're going to execute it so look at this it displayed me from 1 to 10 started with 1 check the condition incremented it and displayed it so guys this is how for loop works let's say now i want to display this in a reverse order that means i want to display from 10 to 1 so my initial value gonna be 10 so i will initiate it with 10 condition will change it will be i is greater than equal to 1 because what i'm checking over here first is 10 second is 9 so 9 is greater than or equal to 1 then 8 7 6 5 4 3 till 1 so whenever it will become 1 is equal to 1 loop will stop but i want my loop to decrement it should decrease by the values not increase so here you will write i minus minus so now first will be 10 decrement it will become 9 check the condition 8 check condition and so on so this is how you can write for loop if you want to display values in a reverse order 
you will execute it and you can see here 10 to 1. So this is how we can use for loop in reverse order. Last iteration statement which we're going to discuss is for each loop. Let's see how it works. So for each loop is used to iterate through the elements of arrays and collections like array list. It is also known as enhanced for loop. So simply if you want to fetch value from arrays or any collections, you will be using for each loop. The transversal of an element in an array can be done by the for each loop. The elements present in the array are returned one by one. So if you want to fetch values from array or any collections one by one, you will be using for each loop. Unlike other loops, we won't be using any incremental or decremental value over here because you are simply fetching values from the arrays. As you can understand guys, arrays are the collection of same set of data. So if you want to store multiple values of same type of data, we use arrays. So there is a collection and for each loop is used to fetch values from that collection. Let's see how it works. So as I have told you, it is to fetch values from arrays. So first thing we have to do is we have to create an array. So let's create a simple array. So string is a data type of array. I'm creating array for days, let's say Monday to Saturday. I'm creating that array where I'm keeping all the collection of days. So here string day, this is the sign for array, square brackets, assign, start the curly braces and here we can pass days, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'm just closing this. So I'm just keeping four days over here in my array and let's see how to fetch value from it. So here you will write four, start the brackets. First thing you're going to write data type of your array. So array is string and then you will be declaring one variable. It can be anything, colon, name of your array. So day. So guys, here day is name of my array and I'm saying fetch value one by one from day, store it in A and display it. If you want to fetch value from array, this is how you can do it. You will be declaring one variable. So mapping it with the array from which you want to fetch the values. So now one by one values will keep on getting stored in A and you will be displaying it. Let's see how we display it. Here you will write system dot out dot println and I will pass A here. So here I'm saying store value from day into A and display A one by one. So here day is my array. First value will be Monday. Monday will be stored in A, get displayed. Tuesday will be fetched, stored in A, get displayed. Then Wednesday will be fetched, stored in A, displayed. So this is how your for each loop works. Let's execute it and see what is going to display us. So we'll run it. You can see here. Monday till Thursday. So this is how it works. So this is how you can transverse elements of an array or you can fetch values one by one from any collection of arrays. So guys, these are some iterations or looping statements. In nutshell, looping statements are used when you want to execute same block of statements again and again depending upon some condition. If you are not sure about the number of execution, you can use while loops. In while loop also, if you want condition to be checked first and then execute the statement, we use while loop. If we want statements to get executed first and then we want to check the condition, we go for do while loop. If we are sure about the number of iterations or execution, we go for for loop. In for loop, you initialize, give condition and increment in the same clause. Next is for each loop. If you want to fetch data from array or any array list collections, you can use for each loop. For each loop will fetch data one by one from your arrays. So guys, this is how your looping statement works. That's all for this video. Thanks for now.